Investigators need your help finding two people who stole guns from a local store yesterday. Find out why they are saying it is so important to find them and find them soon. A man dead after a woman hit him with a car earlier this morning. But find out why the woman is not expected to face charges. And we're in for another hot afternoon. When will the humidity return and when can we expect heat indices to start jumping up? We've got the latest forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon, San Antonio police tell us the suspect who shot and killed her elderly parents yesterday on the northeast side has died. Police identified her as 50 year old Lisa Thoreau. They say she called the police yesterday morning and admitted that she killed her parents. Officers then said she went to the backyard of her parents home in the 5000 block of Round Table Drive and shot herself. Police also identified the parents as 84 year old James Browning and 79 year old Elizabeth Browning. No motive has been announced, but mental health experts describe caring for the elderly as a difficult job. One expert also said that her mental health could have deteriorated during the pandemic as well. We also have an update for you on this case. Investigators with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives now asking for your help to find two suspects who stole guns from a local store. We first told you about this robbery yesterday on the news at noon. It happened at Ranger Firearms on Austin Highway in Van Diver. Officials say 20 pistols were stolen from the store. They say they want to find those guns quickly because they fear they could be used for violent crimes in the future. If you have any information on this case, you can email ATFTips at ATF.gov. Restaurant owners in Texas now able to expand the number of people who can sit inside. As of today, Governor Greg Abbott is allowing restaurants to operate at 75% capacity. Tables should still be kept at least six feet apart or four feet apart if barriers are used in order to separate those tables. There can't be more than 10 people at a single table and hand sanitizing stations should be made available throughout the restaurant. However, this expansion comes as health experts are warning of a second wave of cases in Bear County. In the last three days, there have been 507 new cases of COVID-19 reported. The trend is similar across the Lone Star State. In fact, yesterday was the largest single day increase. Metro Health says the spike came after the Memorial Day weekend when many people were at large gatherings. Even though it's been nearly two weeks since the protests in San Antonio began, Metro Health is also saying we won't know how that affected the numbers for at least another week. That being said, Mayor Ron Nuremberg is asking anyone who attended a protest or even visited a crowded store to get tested. You do have you do not have to have symptoms to get a test. There are also two walk up testing sites available today. Metro Health has free testing at the Roosevelt High School gym on Walsham Road and the Allen Elementary Cafeteria on Dumont Drive. The walk up testing will happen today and tomorrow from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. But a reminder, each site can only test 175 people per day. So you're encouraged to call the hotline at 210-207-5779. And it's not just here in Texas. Health officials are sounding the alarm countrywide. There's been an increase in testing, but also an increase in positive cases of COVID-19 around the country. A new study suggests the country may reach a devastatingly higher death toll by fall. ABC's Rena Roy has more. Across the U.S., some COVID-19 patients are beating incredible odds. Right. Like this 74 year old man in Indiana leaving the hospital after a 78 day battle with the virus. It's great to be old. And many states are pushing forward with reopening plans. But this Harvard doctor predicts the U.S. death toll could pass 200,000 by September. If we don't act, uh, the future is very grim. There will be a lot of people who are going to get very, very sick. Many people will die. In Orange County, California, face masks are no longer required. And in Miami, beaches will be open this weekend for the first time in months, even as Florida sees its highest jump in cases since the pandemic began. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis saying schools will be open in the fall. Infectious disease experts warn that may be challenging when it comes to implementing preventative measures. If done very properly and if we 
all, including the children, take personal responsibility. And we can come up with solutions as long as we bear in mind where the risks are and how to keep those risks to a minimum. Right now, at least 20 states plus Puerto Rico are seeing a rise in confirmed cases. Since Memorial Day, Texas has seen a 36 percent increase in hospitalizations. I'm growing increasingly concerned that we may be approaching the precipice the precipice of a disaster. Whenever this first started happening and things started opening back up, we wore a mask everywhere. As the weeks went on, we kind of just like laid off from it, just washed our hands and didn't think anything of it, and then boom. Oregon and Nashville have delayed their reopening plans, both citing a rising number in cases. And that Harvard doctor says current data shows about 800 to 1,000 Americans are dying daily from the virus. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. In your top stories this dude, a woman is not facing charges after she hit and killed a man with her car late last night. San Antonio police say it was around 10 p.m. when a woman driving a red Malibu hit the pedestrian on the access road of 410 near Rigsby. The man who was in his late 30s was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say the woman did not see the man in the road and the car behind her vouched for her as a witness. Once again, the woman will not be facing any charges. Arson investigators say they found evidence of a Molotov cocktail after a Westside home's porch caught fire. It started on the 100 block of Laza Street at 11 last night. San Antonio police tell us firefighters arrived at the home to find the fire had already been extinguished. And arson investigators were called out because there was evidence that the fire could have been started by that bottle bomb no one was injured. Houston authorities are looking into what caused a bar exploding explosion this morning. According to our sister station KPRC, it happened around 445. Officials say the incident at bar 5015 was likely a gas explosion. A food truck near the area also destroyed. Crews continue their cleanup efforts this afternoon along the street affected. The deadline to vote in July's runoff election is on Monday. The election day is July 14th. Early voting begins June 29th. There are several ways you can go about registering. You can fill out a voter registration application online, print it out, and then mail it to the voter registrar in your county. If you'd like some more information, all you have to do is head over to KSET.com and search Vote 2020. Here's something you're not going to see every day. Dinosaurs have been spotted at the Freeman Coliseum. The dinosaur exhibit Jurassic Quest is back in town for a couple of weekends. Alicia Barrera visited with some of the dino trainers for a visit before the doors open. Hear the roars of the dinosaurs outdoors, and we know it's going to be a hot weekend, but you can stay cool with your AC cranked all the way up in your car. Due to COVID-19, Jurassic Quest did have to change gears for their first ever drive through experience for kids and families. Jurassic Quest will be here for two weekends, and guests will go on a quest guided by an audio tour that features over 70 moving and lifelike dinosaurs. If you're coming, pack a face mask as you'll have a chance to step out of your vehicle for a safari style picture and during the drive through you'll also see and learn about new reptiles. Well at Jurassic Quest this year we have Ancient Oceans which is our new exhibit here at Jurassic Quest. If you've seen Jurassic Quest before it's a whole different experience with Ancient Oceans. We have a 50 foot megalodon and we have a lot of Ancient Oceans creatures that you'll be driving through. Tickets for a trip back into time are sold out for the next two weekends here in San Antonio, but you can head over to ksat.com. There we have a link where you can purchase tickets for a city near you. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. You know, dinosaurs are big, but that's a pretty big shark right there, too. Coming up, we get a chance to hear from our New Braunfels' own Jordan Westberg, who is getting drafted by the Baltimore Orioles. Happened yesterday for him. Larry Ramirez has his reaction today. And we continue to honor our great graduates here in San Antonio. We're going to meet a student who is going on to be a computer animator and what he had to do to overcome all of that to get where he is today. You are looking at some traffic backed up at I-10 at Wurzbach. This is eastbound. You can see there's some... Uh, Emergency crews right there. Looks like an 18-wheeler has had some sort of accident. 
There's a number of cars involved, a uh, traffic stop for at least two lanes. Uh, this is uh, right in the medical center area at I-10 and Wurzbach. Uh, again, if this is the eastbound lanes of I-10, and it looks as though there's only one lane of traffic moving through at this hour. Now you can see they even have the exit closed right there, so a lot of people are trying to get off sooner than that and get on the access road. So if you head in that direction, know that uh, there's going to be a little delay for you. The class of 2020 has been facing a lot of unique challenges after school shut down in March. Here at Case Hat, though, we are shining a spotlight on those graduates throughout our great graduate series. This morning, Stephanie Cerna introduces us to Alex Don from Brennan High School. I've always been fascinated in computers. Alex Don is looking forward to becoming a computer animator. And during his senior year at Brennan High School, his economics teacher, Ben Woodchick, could see Alex's talent shine through. Said, Alex was always finishing his work early and, and getting everything done. And then it was on to some sort of animation, some sort of drawing, some sort of art. He designed that? Yeah. Extremely creative individual. So it was cool to see anything from paper projects to drawings. I want to become a computer animator, programmer, or game designer. I like how people put so many things into those. Alex has had a challenging school year. Since last summer, my mom has died. My dad has gotten cancer twice. But even through difficult times, Ben Woodcheck says Alex always pushed through. Alex was a very energetic student. I mean, he was always uh, on top of his work, but he was always asking for more, 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 which was pretty unique given his uh, situation, some of the things that were happening in his own life, having to come, overcome some adversity. So uh, it was always a pleasure to have him in class, and you always knew you were going to get some energy and some entertainment from Alex. Stephanie Serna, KSET 12 News. Congratulations and good luck. Boy, he's overcome a lot. Yeah. Good for him. Live look outside with live cam. Pretty out there. And another really nice morning if you got out for your coffee and maybe a little exercise. It was very nice. We got down to 63 again. That was second morning in a row. That's really good for June. Uh, the aquifer is still falling, though. This number is not so good. It's down over a foot again, 665.8. Looks like we're falling about a foot each day. It is pumping season, but that aquifer falling fast. Moles low, grass is low. That's a change from yesterday. Good to see that. And we've got some more nice mornings on the way. A little bit of a change next week. We're going to talk about your forecast coming up. We're headed back out to that uh, traffic trouble spot. This is at I-10 and Wurzbach in the Medical Center area. Looks like traffic is creeping along at least one lane and the exit there in the eastbound lanes are uh, closed. It's, uh, I think there's an 18 wheeler involved and maybe a couple of other vehicles. You can see fire is there, EMS is there, police are there. So they're trying to get that thing uh, cleaned up. The access road closed there, but open earlier than that. So that's where a lot of the traffic is being uh, diverted to. So if you're headed that direction, take your patience with you. Could be a, a little longer than you expected. Yeah, that's a, a lot of traffic backed up, by the way. For noon. Yeah, for, for noon. This is not the rush hour. Uh, we are looking, though, at a lot of people who are hoping for a beautiful continuation of this low humidity, low temperatures in the morning for the weekend. I think we're going to get it. I, ah. that, that, that's been the big storyline here are those mornings. And we can kind of pick out what happened here. So we look at the month of June, and these are the low temperatures we've seen so far this month. See what the average is. We started off the month pretty much on average, maybe a little bit below. And then we got that frontal battery, and you see what it did to the morning lows. Yesterday we were at 63. Today we're at 63. And as we look at the forecast into the weekend, we're going to stay below average. So it really helped us out. It's been uh, very nice and very rarely do we get four days in a row in the 60s here in June. We will take it. Uh, I think by next week we'll be returning to uh, the 70s for overnight lows. And the forecast, eh, it does not change that much. We have our ridge of high pressure, our summer ridge of high pressure, and it wobbles around a little bit, but generally stays over Texas. All the action is going to be up there across the Pacific Northwest with the trough there, and then you got a trough across the east. There's nothing really here to shove this thing out of the way. So as it just sits there, it's going to keep things plenty toasty. One other thing we're watching too, it's that time of year where we have to start watching for dust. 
uh, coming in from Africa. This is fast forwarding now to Wednesday and we start to see a plume of dust working into the Caribbean. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a lighter shade there that's working uh, towards Mexico. And this actually does push to the north. And I think some of this dust may work into our area, uh, perhaps the end of next week into next weekend. So we got some time to watch this, but we always want to point it out because it makes the sky a little bit hazy. Sometimes people with asthma and that sort of thing have to keep an eye out for this. And it is that season where uh, the Saharan dust can, can kind of kick up. Okay, let's uh, go outside for you now. We've got uh, clear skies here in San Antonio, 84 degrees. Stew point is at 57. That number has come up a little bit, but we're still in the comfortable category with easterly winds at about seven miles per hour. Once you see the winds go southeasterly, that's when we have to worry about that moisture coming back in, and that probably happens early next week. 82 right now, Comfort, 86 in Hondo, 87 Divine, 87 in Pleasanton, 84 over there at Randolph. And uh, we are starting to see some 90s on the map too. Del Rio and Criso Springs checking in at 90 this afternoon. Dew point tracker, and this really goes for most of South Texas here, stays low through Sunday, kicks up a little bit Monday. It's showing uh, that it may drop off some Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm not really buying that. I think we probably stay in the 60s. So we sort of return to more of that muggy setup as we get into uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week. Cloud cover is not there. There's a few clouds up across parts of Oklahoma, but really the country is quiet. We've got some showers on the East Coast, a couple showers up there around Seattle. But this is sort of the uh, summer pattern kicking in here. You're not going to see a whole lot of action, at least over the next five days or so. Temperatures today up around 94 for a high northeasterly winds, 5 to 10. Look for 94 tomorrow, 94 on Sunday, which is Flag Day, by the way. And then uh, we kick it up to 95, change it up a little bit. Monday, Tuesday with humidity returning next week. Guys. I'm going to miss those 63 degree mornings. <laughs> Me too. I have to admit it. Thank you, Justin. We've been talking about the way things are done differently these days because yeah. of COVID-19. And yesterday, you and a star athlete were able to pull off a unique way to announce a college move. That was cool. We're very lucky. Thank you to I uh, have Lucas Coley, Cornerstone Christian quarterback. Join us live, KSAT 12 Sports, to announce his commitment to the University of Arkansas coming up. We have some of his commit video, which is pretty darn cool. Plus, in baseball, Asa Lacey out of Kerrville Tyvee held a Zoom interview while driving around. We got it coming up. University of Arkansas. Cornerstone Christian quarterback Lucas Coley made his announcement live last night on KSAT 12 Sports. He's going to be a Razorback in big board sports. Left-handed pitcher Asa Lacey is on cloud nine after getting selected fourth overall by the Kansas City Royals in the 2020 Major League Baseball Draft. The Royals followed the same strategy that worked in 2018 by adding another college pitcher with their first round pick by selecting Lacey out of Texas A&M. The Tyvee High School grad met with the media online while driving around and said his phone was blowing up after his name was called. Um, it's been a little bit of celebration, a little bit of kind of relief, you know, that everything's all over now, well, so to speak. Um, the big part is over now. We just got to, um, you know, finally excited to just get up there and, and start meeting people and, you know, get to work. But um, a lot of phone calls, a lot of text messages. Um, my phone actually locked up this morning. I had to reset it. So, but it's, it's been, it's been awesome. That is bad when your phone locks up. Shortstop Jordan Westberg at a new Braunfels High School was picked up 30th overall by the Baltimore Orioles. Jordan was a star player at Mississippi State and has the skills to play ball in the bigs. He's a versatile, athletic guy, and during his Zoom interview with the media, he was asked what skill set will help him get to the bigs and stay there. I think probably the best part of my game is my athleticism, and um, the athleticism allows me to be versatile on the field. I think it allows me to play an explosive type of baseball. Um, and I think that that explosive ability is what's going to get me to the big leagues. Westberg added that he wants to play shortstop as long as possible, but can also play second and third base and will play where the Orioles want him.
Cornerstone Christian quarterback Lucas Coley, class of 2021, announced live on KSAT last night he will take his skills to the University of Arkansas after his high school days are over with. Texas athletes put together his commitment video, which Coley tweeted, and it now has more than 265,000 views. Here's part of that video. First and foremost, I want to thank my unwavering Lord and Savior for blessing me with the ability to play this game. I'd like to thank my mom for being unselfish, loving, supportive, and most of all for being my biggest win of all time. I know nothing is possible without the endless sacrifices from her. I'd like to thank all my siblings for teaching me the true value of love. They've kept me level-headed and been there for me through everything. And with all that being said, I'll be taking my talents to the University of Arkansas. And here's his mother, Deb Coley, watching his commitment video for the first time. Lucas wanted her to wait to watch it with his family and friends all at the same time. How many people were there yesterday? About 25? Yeah, about 25, yeah, uh, about 25. Family, friends, and some of his uh, football coaches. Man, that was awesome. Yeah, well, and he we knew and he, he was going to turn the hat. Right, and he didn't invite everybody he wanted to, obviously. Oh, uh, yeah. oh, yeah, he could add a lot more. Not enough room in the front yard. No. Huh? <laughs> Social distance <laughs> exactly. and all that. That's great stuff. Congratulations <laughs> to him. Yeah. That was fun to watch. Thank you, Larry. Changes continue to occur after the death of George Floyd. We're going to see what is being proposed here in San Antonio in our next half hour. A major decision made in Kentucky in the wake of the killing of Breonna Taylor. It comes as protests around the country continue to call for change. ABC's Inez De La Catera has the latest. She will never be forgotten. Overnight, the Louisville City Council unanimously passing Breonna's law, a ban on no-knock warrants. The legislation named in honor of Breonna Taylor, who was shot and killed while sleeping in her apartment. Officers barging in unannounced. The officers involved on administrative reassignment, but have not been charged. This is just something she always was passionate about, so even in her death, she'll get to continue to do that. The new law is just the latest change as calls for racial justice intensify around the nation. And in Seattle, demonstrators holding fast to several city blocks in what's being called the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, taking over a police precinct following days of clashes with officers. Protesters putting up their own barricades. There's also a clinic, a co-op, and free food. This building is the, is the people's. You know, we pay for it with our taxes. We just want to make sure that it's being used for the right things. President Trump reacting to the news earlier this week, blasting Governor Jay Inslee and Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin on Twitter, writing, take back your city. If you don't, I will. The mayor firing back. One of the things this president will never understand is that listening to community is not a weakness. It is a strength. Seattle's police chief now telling GMA sure that I'm able to get my officers back into the precinct so that they can respond to calls for service. This comes as a new ABC News Ipsos poll shows more than 60 percent of Americans do not support the defund the police movement. That movement calls for redirecting some funds from police departments and putting it towards social programs. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. In a new memo, Mayor Ron Nuremberg is calling for city council to adopt a resolution ahead of the next San Antonio Police Officers Association collective bargaining agreement. That resolution would outline priorities for officer disciplinary procedures and a, quote, healthier balance across our budget, end quote. In the memo, the mayor called on the Public Safety Committee to review and finalize several policies for police. He wants the Community Health and Equity Committee to evaluate policing practices, promote race and gender equality, and review de-escalation measures. And don't forget, you can watch the case at Defender special, Broken Blue, tonight at 7. We initially aired this investigation a few months ago. It looked at the collective bargaining agreement between SAPD and the police union, which allowed officers with a history of misconduct to be reinstated. This issue is at the forefront of many protests around the nation after George Floyd's killing. Again, you can watch it tonight at 7 right here on KSAT 12. Two Texas cities are in the top 10 for the most dog attacks on a mail carrier. 
Houston ranks first in the nation after a reported 85 cases of a dog attacking a USPS employee. Dallas is fifth on the list with 40 attacks. However, postal workers are getting attacked by dogs less often than in years past. There were 200 less attacks last year than in 2018. USPS attributes the downward trend to technology and awareness. Handheld scanners used by mail carriers can indicate the presence of a dog and delivery service alerts also give homeowners advance time to secure dogs before carriers arrive. NASA has found a company that it says will fly its water hunting robot on the moon. The space agency has chosen Astrobotic of Pittsburgh to deliver its rover to the moon's South Pole. They're going to be tasked with handling NASA's Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover. It's also known as Viper. Viper will be roaming several miles of the moon, collecting data in its search for ice and water, and it's going to take soil samples. NASA believes the robot will help in its mission to develop a sustainable and long-term presence on the moon. Viper is expected to make its moon landing in late 2023. Let's get back outside to this trans guide shot. I-10 at Wurzbach, you're looking east. Traffic is crawling along. There is a wreck right up there on the, uh, on the shoulder. You can see on the right side of the road, the access or the uh, access road is being used as well. And I think a record just showed up a few minutes ago. So uh, it almost looks progress. as though they're, they're down to one lane and the other, all yeah. the other lanes are just blocked. You can see the cones are out. Everybody's being diverted away from the, right-hand lanes into that one left lane, moving very slowly. Yeah, there's an 18-wheeler involved. We can tell that, but not exactly sure. It looks like it's lost some of its load, or maybe the trailer turned over. Not exactly sure from the different camera angles we have, but we do see an 18-wheeler cab sitting there. So hopefully they'll get this thing cleaned up before too long. Yeah, we usually have an increase in traffic right around this time as people get off work at around noontime on a Friday. Looking forward to a pretty weekend but it's also going to be pretty dry. Yeah, it is. It's going to be a quiet weekend and uh, we'll have some warm afternoons, but it really, it's, it's going to be nice. Bottom line here for, for June. We have a great picture on our KSAC Connect. I don't know that I've ever seen one of these. This is a barred owl. It's cooling off in the bird bath. Found a good spot. Uh, and I like the caption. It says, I'll be seeing you. Oh, <laughs> I get it. Well, bird humor for you. I like that. Uh, thank you for that picture. That's great. Uh, great shot there. Action shot. Uh, looking at temperatures across the country. We're at 84 here in San Antonio, 86 in Dallas. Pretty warm stuff up and down the plains as high pressures in control centered just to the south and west of Texas. The really hot stuff's over there around Las Vegas and Phoenix. Your typical hot spots, 96 degrees there now. They'll see some triple digits today. Really, most of the country is going to be pretty warm. Uh, just not a lot of rain to speak of. Uh, really anywhere across uh, the United States. Temperatures here locally, 81 Floresville, 87 in New Braunfels, 81 Canyon Lake, 84 Comfort, 85 right now in Tarpley. And temperatures will be in the 90s here pretty soon, 91 by 2 o'clock, 94. High temperatures, sunny skies, and temperatures do cool down a bit as we go into this evening. If you have outdoor plans, we should be back into the 80s by, I'd say, about 8 o'clock this evening. Guys? All right, Justin, thank you very much. Coming up in a few minutes, Larry Ramirez has an update on Texas receiver Jordan Whittington. That's in sports in just a couple of minutes. Another big company is designating Juneteenth as a holiday. Find out more after the break. Hello, everyone. This is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Chatter. Employees over at Blue Apron about to get a new holiday. The meal kit service now introducing Election Day as a paid day off, all in order to support employees who want to go out and vote. The company plans to close down all of their facilities on November the 3rd. This is part of a greater push towards diversity and inclusion. The move also comes as conversations about voting and racial inequality are heightened due to the recent protests, all sparked by the death of George Floyd. Meanwhile, Taco Bell's parent company, Yum! Brand, suing Grubhub for allegedly violating a delivery contract track following its massive acquisition deal with European company JustEatTakeaway.com. Now, Yum! Brands and Grubhub had been in a five-year contract that required the delivery app to provide better pricing and service levels for thousands of Taco Bell and KFC restaurants across the U.S. The relationship soon soured after Yum! Brands broadened their delivery partners, including Grubhub's biggest rivals, Uber Eats and, Do and Postmates. The lawsuit alleges that Grubhub wrongfully terminated the contract after just two years instead of the five 
extent that they had promised. Both parties have declined to comment. And after years of locking up African-American beauty products in a case protected by a censor, Walmart now changing their course. The retail giant says they'll no longer continue this practice, responding to criticism that the policy was a blatant form of racial discrimination. Now, critics say the practice was inappropriate as it implied that black people were more likely to shoplift from their stores. The move comes as major companies begin to reevaluate long-standing practices in the wake of widespread protests against racism. And the Chatter Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from New York City. Three major airlines suing the United Kingdom over new quarantine rules. The new measure, which started Monday, requires all international travelers arriving to the UK from certain countries to self-isolate for two weeks. But British Airways, EasyJet, and Ryanair say the new measure is, quote, flawed and will crush the economy. The government says the rule is to help prevent a second wave of infections that could overwhelm health services. Another corporation has joined the list of those making Juneteenth a company holiday. Nike adding June 19th to its list of official paid holidays. Nike CEO made the announcement in a letter to employees on Thursday. The move is just one part of the company's plans to acknowledge nationwide demonstrations calling for racial justice. Juneteenth honors the day in 1865 when Union soldiers announced the news of the Emancipation Proclamation to enslaved African Americans in Galveston, Texas. The news came more than two years after the proclamation had been issued. All right, let's get outside with live cam. You might want to get outside and enjoy this uh, beautiful weather we're having right now. L lunch on the patio. Sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds nice. You know, it will get a little bit warm this afternoon. It was warm yesterday. It's the mornings that we've loved so much. 63 degrees this morning, which is 90 degrees below the average, which is 72. Uh, records are 105 and 59, so we got within range of the record. Once again, that was set back in 1995. Pattern changes a little bit next week. We're going to talk about that seven day forecast coming up. Absolutely fantastic. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, say I, I did it again. I, I got up early this morning and jumped on a horse and went for a ride. No one sweated. It was wonderful. Why don't you give the horse nice. like, like let the horse have a break on the morning <laughs> and just let it run around in the cool and, and, and you know, relax and enjoy it without being worked. Maybe it'd like to be ridden. Oh, did it? Okay. <laughs> I, I got back. nothing. I mean, you know, <laughs> I got nothing. I, I do agree with you, Ursula, though. It is. Uh, it was beautiful this morning. It we was fun. Together, we're going to put it together really a string of nice mornings. Hey, you want to go down to the coast this weekend? It's looking good there, too. Uh, the weather is, should be really nice. No issues with the water. Water temperature's great. Uh, temperatures will be in the 90s all this weekend. We're thinking low 90s uh, down there, Rockport, Port A. And the winds will be light, too, 5 to 10 miles per hour. So it's, it's a good weekend for that. Uh, speaking of the tropics, though, this is the time of year where we look out to the Atlantic for any Saharan dust. We're starting to get a plume now. It could be out of Africa, and this will slowly make its way across the ocean and sometimes especially this this time of year we can see some of that dust work up into texas it's possible but probably not until late next week into uh, next weekend you can kind of see it there it was kind of light uh, some of that dust may eventually move in we'll keep an eye on it we'll let you know sometimes people with asthma that sort of thing uh, can be bothered by that lows this morning as ursula mentioned very very nice 63 degrees here in san antonio 61 in new braunfels 54 fredericksburg 52 the low this morning in kerrville but as we look at the daytime forecast high temperatures, we're going to be right back there in the 90s. We got up to 95 yesterday, maybe a degree cooler today. Uh, some mid 90s out west too. It's more of that dry heat though, so that helps us a little bit. Outside right now, we've got clear skies, 84. Dew point is at 57, and that number is rising slowly, but surely it's up to 57 now. East Julie winds at about seven miles per hour. If we start to get a southeast Julie component to that wind, we may see the dew point go. A little bit higher, but right now it's in a comfortable territory. Uh, no cloud cover to speak of here around Bear County. 89, closing in on 90 degrees there in Castroville. Same story in Pleasanton, 84, Randolph, 87, New Braunfels. And there are some 90s on the map out there around Carrizo Springs and Del Rio. Otherwise, everybody is in the mid 80s at this point. There's a look at the dew points. Not everybody is bone dry here. I mean, it feels pretty good. Hill country down to San Antonio. 
As you get south of here, dew points do start to jump up into the 60s. That's when you start to feel it a little bit. But generally speaking, we're going to keep these dew points 50s, maybe low 60s through the weekend. So there's no issue there. It's probably not until next week that we start to see a real big increase in, in moisture. Uh, the radar and satellite, man, it's just a really quiet picture here across the country. A little bit of rain there in Oklahoma, some rain in the East Coast. And another system moving on board across Pacific Northwest, but nothing of great significance. There's no big storm system, no severe weather, anything like that. So uh, good travel weather if you're planning to travel this week. Uh, temperatures 94 this afternoon. Northeast Chile winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, and we'll see those numbers come down fairly quickly this evening into the 80s. 94 coming up tomorrow, 94 on Sunday, 95 Monday and Tuesday, and then back to 94 Wednesday and Thursday. Take your pick, 94, 95. Basically what you're going to get next seven days. And again, the humidity starts to return Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. We'll be right back. Texas junior safety BJ Foster broke his hand after he punched the bumper of his own car in anger. That was revealed yesterday by head coach Tom Herman in a Zoom meeting with reporters. Foster broke the fifth metacarpal on his hand after discovering damage to his car's bumper with a note explaining what happened and who did it. That prompted Foster to strike the bumper, breaking his hand. Foster, who has 14 career starts, will still be able to participate in voluntary workouts with a cast on his hand. He was already due to miss spring practice because of shoulder surgery, but that was canceled due to COVID-19. And Coach Herman also said that wide receiver Jordan Winnington is full speed without pain after sports hernia surgery. Back in December, the Quero High School star underwent his third surgery and second since arriving at Texas to repair the sports hernia injury he's been dealing with since his senior year of high school. Brandeis boys head basketball coach Mark Gardner accepted the Broncos State Championships trophy yesterday for the Broncos advancing to the Class 6A state tournament. Brandeis didn't get to play in the tournament because it was canceled due to the coronavirus. So the UIL gave every team who advanced to the final four in each class a trophy reading state championships. This past season was incredible. A lot of memories that we will have forever. Um, the biggest of which was winning our region. You know, watching the kids celebrate the regional championship, the first one in our program history was something that I'll always remember. But when I think back on this season, it's not the wins and the individual accolades that I'll remember. It's our kids. We had such a special group of high character and high academic kids that truly exemplified the word team. And they are what made this season special. A junior. As part of the ceremony, the announcer named every member on the Broncos roster. Yesterday was graduation day for the class of 2020 at Jefferson High School. For the first time in school history, those ceremonies were held at Alamo Stadium. Plus, it was a significant moment in the life of Fernando Osorio, who fled his home country of Honduras because of gang violence to live with his mom in San Antonio. But it wasn't until he met former Mayor Ed Garza that Osorio jumped on the right path to college through the Urban Soccer Leadership Academy founded by Garza. Most of those that were in the soccer program were not going to college a few years ago. And so part of our motivation and inspiration was to introduce these young men and women to uh, the college process and, and the things that a lot of people just take for granted. We were able to show them what it was about and why they should do it. Yosele has helped me a lot and to a whole nother level. They helped me uh, become the young man I am today. They helped me. Uh, get my thoughts together uh, and commit to my future. You can hear more about USLA and the thousands of young men and women this program is helping this Sunday night on Instant Replay. Like every year, we get more kids in more sports, taking it to another level. Right? It's awesome to see. We got a lot of great talent here in this yeah, city. Do, for sure. Future leaders. All right, it's time for SA Live. Yeah, they're going to be back. Uh, well, what do they? What do they do? They're kicking back. Is it what they It's Friday. They're kick kicking back? back a few. Oh, that's what they're. Oh, it is Friday then. Yeah, don't worry. It's a public service. Mike and Fiona <laughs> are taste testing some Texas beers, so you will know which ones are best. Okay.
The countdown to Father's Day is on. It actually started the day after Father's Day last year. Hey, we have got tons of great ideas for food, for drinks, gifts, a whole lot more. Homemade gifts straight from the heart. You don't need a lot of cash to give dad a gift he can hold on to for a lifetime. Let's be honest, dad would be happy just kind of knocking back a couple of cold ones. Hey, there are some new Texas beers on the shelves and we are gonna put them to the test. Can you drink on the job? I can't, it's great out here. Everybody's so jealous of me. Mm, who's got an opener? Speaking of beer, have you ever had steak marinated in root beer? David Elder had to try this combination. He heads to a downtown hot spot to dig in. It gives it a real kind of, kind of a homey, uh, like something your grandma made, but just a little kick up. Yeah, a little elevated, yeah. elevated yeah. grandma food. Yeah. So, are you missing sports? Hey, there's one made for social distancing. You get active, you're competitive, and enjoy the outdoors. Is your breath as fresh as you think? A lot of folks are getting a blast of their own breath these days. We're gonna tell you how you can make sure yours stays fresh. A fantastic performance. How a group of young singers is helping the people of San Antonio using their incredible talents. Does your child just love science and technology? We may have found the school of their dreams and how you can get them enrolled. A brand new SA Live is just a couple of minutes away.